Is this how the future of Audi looks like? Let's find out together with the all-new Audi Q6 e-tron, the new electric Audi SUV here in the very final version. It will actually pave the way for more new electric models at Audi. It's also the brother or sister of the Porsche Macan electric, which we also have recently shown. And here in the front, let's start with Thomas Nautokfühl in 4K, full screen, full length. Let's go with the closed front grille. This is an S-line vehicle. So you have these rather sporty forms in the lower part. At the same time, it also employs a black pack. So the accentuation is in the grille. Also in the lower part, everything is blacked out. Here the vehicle is uh, <laughs> closing itself. And you can see once again this cool welcome or, or goodbye signature. If you go for the optional matrix LED, then you can pick individual signatures. So you can basically individualize your vehicle from the lights both in the front and also in the rear. Side profile 4 meters 77 or 188 inches is the length of the Q6 e-tron and by that it basically sits between the Q8 e-tron and the Q4 e-tron. But I can already tell you right now when this is launching right now the Q8 e-tron is dead. Why is that? This one is more efficient and also offers higher range I really love the Q8 e-tron, you know, how it drives, how it looks. I think it actually looks more beautiful than this one. But the range is just not sufficient and it's also not efficient enough. So this one here will be the big new Audi SUV, even though it's a little bit smaller here in this EV segment. Wheels, 18 to 21 inch, and these here are indeed the biggest ones available. The color here is called Plasma Blue, by the way. The CD value, by the way, is at 0.28, not the best one, just comparing a Tesla Model X is at 0.24. That's way better because in the CD value, the lower value is better. So how the car basically stands, you know, in the wind, how aerodynamic it is. Towards the rear, well, that looks at least aerodynamic. Look at that, this light strip going all the way across, pretty cool. If you have, by the way, this optional OLED in the rear, so that's an option even on top of the matrix LED, then you also have these organic LED here in the lower part. So one of the features of the rear OLED is the proximity sensor. So when I'm getting closer to the vehicle, there it is. It basically signals like, stop, you're getting too close. Maybe if a <laughs> like vehicle is behind you. And what's also a pretty cool or funny feature, when I activate the hazard lights, look at that. Then <laughs> we also have this emergency triangle here next to the hazard lights or turning indicators, which also have the cascading style. And the turning indicators in the front, wow, look at that. Here, this individual segmentation that looks really futuristic. Just matte black here for the key, by the way, I, I like that. And in the rear, what's also pretty cool, that we have also a very nice welcome and goodbye signature when we start up or close to the vehicle. There it is. You can see how it builds up. Yeah, that's pretty impressive, isn't it? And now to the tech spec. So the suspension, the base suspension, will get frequency selective dampers. That means it's not actively adaptive, but reacts passively adaptive to the impact it gets. That's the standard. Optional air suspension that both counts for the normal Q8 e-tron, sorry, Q6 e-tron, <laughs> and the SQ6 e-tron. Wait a minute, there's also an SQ6. So here, this is the new logo for S-line models, and if it would be an SQ6, then there would be an additional S between the batching right here. Because there will be an entry-level rear-wheel drive-only model, so it's just a rear electric motor, but available at a later stage after we film this video. And then at the moment, they're launching it with the all-wheel drive model, this one here, the Q6 e-tron <laughs> Quattro. This will have an acceleration peak of 5.9 seconds to 1 km an hour, 62 miles an hour. And at 4.3 seconds, then the SQ6, the sporty model, also one electric motor in the rear, one in the front, giving you the best possible acceleration then so far. Does it frunk or not? We know that the German manufacturers have been saving francs for later, it seems. But now it's there. <laughs> Probably because it's a... Porsche brother, and you know, they are famous for francs also in the non-electric models. Here, 65 liters, so enough space, not only for a charging cable, maybe even for something more. Batteries, either 95 kilowatt hours net, or the smaller one, 80 kilowatt hours net. 
and we expect some 500 kilometers, 300 miles of range for the bigger battery in a mixed condition. Can be, of course, better when you have like mild temperature and so on and very constant speed. Could be worse in winter time and high speed and so on. Recharging now 800 volt architecture because they share that with Porsche. And here's the charging clip. There we go. It's also electric. The reaction here in that studio car not that good yet. AC 11 kilowatt, optional 22 kilowatt later, and DC peak is now 270 kilowatt, and that means 21 minutes, 10 to 80 percent state of charge. So that's actually a cool thing. We can also close it again, just like a short tap right here. There we go. So the cool thing is they share the charging architecture with Porsche, and so they profit from this really, really quick charging. The only thing they don't get, well, the Macan gets a rear axle steering. The Q6 e-tron here does not get it. After all then, yeah, it's also low on the price, so the price difference here, Q6 e-tron to the Macan in the entry price, at least 10,000 euros if you compare the all-wheel drive models. And of course, a Macan, when you spec it, it gets easily way more expensive, so the price difference, the effective one, will be even larger than after configuring these two vehicles. Now I've been charging the vehicle, and let's see, the charging flap is supposed to close, ah, there we go, supposed to close itself, that's nice. And of course, we could recharge a lot here in the studio. <laughs> and pretty cool, we have a second charging flap here on the passenger side, and that is actually standard. I'm just not the biggest fan of this mechanism. Here, this is an AC charging on the passenger side. What I really like here with this studio is that we can turn the car around, always, you know, facing the best light for you. And it's also really funny that uh, you know, this, this disc here, when you just listen to it, like the mechanism underneath, to me it sounds like a medieval bridge, you know, getting released or pulled up, <laughs> maybe, you know, like a, in a, you know, very archaic movie or something. Yeah, and then you can also see the car from all the different angles as well. Let's check out the door closing sounds. Oh, that's awesome. Listen to that. Wow, what a door closing sound. This is perfection indeed. Then inside of the door, top part here is not in Entirely hard pick, I would say, but kind of hard structure. And then the nice fabric insert here, this very trim. Then hashtag capacitive BS buttons here in the side of the door. Um, see, this is one button. So this is definitely going Mercedes style now. But you have individual fields then here for the um, control of the side mirrors and so on. And there you can actually open the rear trunk. <clears throat> There's no felt covering on that inside here at all. It's also the S-line interior. You can see that here at the batch in the lower part. And then we also have the S-line steering wheel with the new two-dimensional Audi logos. Perforation at the side. At the moment here, it's off. There you can see how it looks like when it's off. And when I turn on the ignition, then you can see here also at the steering wheel, these fields are illuminated. They also give somewhat a feedback. But once again, this one button field design. And I always just feel it's cost savings. Manufacturers tell me it's not, it's for design purposes, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe I have a different understanding of that. Yeah, and then have you these uh, shifting pedals, which are of course not for shifting then for the electric vehicles, but rather for the recuperation modes. Here, by the way, easily muting the vehicle. This is here also my favorite seat. So we have fabric on the inside, leatherette on the outside. This is also the sport seat. So there would be a base seat, and then here there's a sport seat that has more accentuation here in the upper part in the shoulder area. And the base seat is also available with this material mix, but only in the EU. Northern American versions will have a leatherette animal skin mix. So overall, it is in general not possible to get this vehicle here animal free. And there's hardly any other manufacturer in the world that presents an electric vehicle in 2024 and offers no animal-free solution. Also, you're not for the steering wheel, so Audi is really lagging behind in that case. But this seat combination would be the best there is, but then again, not available in the North American market. So, hmm, disappointed in that respect. Here, headroom with 189, 6 for 2. Wow, ample of space here. 
can of course also get a panoramic roof and it's a very nice and comfortable seating position a lot of space no problem at all wow and then look at that screen setup here screen screen screens <laughs> so we have here this one curved unit and also the exterior frame here resembles the octagon grill in the front on the exterior and it consists actually of 12 inch screen 14.5 inch screen android automotive in the back office so to, so to speak on the right side 11 inch passenger screen this is an option and i also love here look at that here the ambient lighting you know in this yard design going all the way across i also appreciate this here this living room atmosphere with the fabric covering you also soft touch on the top dashboard digital instruments here on the left side you can change over the view or the contents you want to see you can get a head-up display and when you here start or shut down the vehicle you also have this animation in a head-up display temperature control is here in the lower part it always stays here and also gives you this clicking feedback so to speak but no haptical interface here for the van, van speed they also have to go in this menu right here it's completely new infotainment system it looks really very different and you can of course also switch through the different colors here for the ambient lighting lower middle console here first of all adaptive cup holders you can also close them like this the cover here however feels a little bit light i would say a lot of high gloss black here definitely this is then the shifting lever b for the higher recuperation mode still we have a manual volume jog here like to have that oh smokers package haven't seen that for a while there we go and then we have two usb-c chargers in the front and there's an inductive charging pad um, it's kind of hard to see you can put a smartphone right there and it's being held tight there's also a cooling for the inductive charging pad underneath yeah not the best solution in the front they're hidden maybe and then there's a nice fabric covering here for this middle console at the moment there's a emergency fail um, safe switch here for this studio vehicle which is still like the you know, very first one that is built or one of the first ones of course this will be then empty and with more space underneath if you are a passenger at some point you know in motorcycle racing you sometimes say like he was a passenger at some point you know when you get rid of your motorcycle while driving that's of course the worst thing that can happen yeah you know i'm motocross and supercross fan that's why i was thinking of that but if you're a passenger in the vehicle then you have one advantage here in the q6 e-tron you can control the passenger screen it's basically mirroring what you see on the left you can have all the things in the infotainment system but i have always been wondering uh, why would you do that i mean yeah you can control the gps a little bit better because the screens on the left side here are lent towards the driver so indeed in this setup here it is harder for the you, know, you would really have to reach over here as a passenger yeah it's kind of like a trade-off um, i'm not sure about that solution yet in most cases i would say the passenger screen is not a very useful option or you can you don't have to have it let's take it that way but talking about this option policy there is something happening here again with this function on demand thing and we know like from the gaming industry and so on you buy like a like another sword and you pay for the sword or something and manufacturers are also kicking in that game now because for example with the matrix led you can start with the base led and then you can like for 1400 euros buy the matrix led or for less than 1000 euros you buy the possibility of having the matrix led like the hardware but you cannot use the function and then they want to charge you monthly weekly whatever annually for that function to use they say audi says that for the q5 for example people like from the nordic countries they have been using that for example pay for that option during the winter month maybe that's then the cheaper solution but the question is for how long for example when you lease the vehicle yeah i can understand the thought behind it then also manufacturers want to earn more money also monthly or annually from the customer for me personally me as a customer I would always feel a little bit betrayed if I have something in the car, but I cannot use it. You know what I mean? So I understand the concept behind it, but I'm not a fan of it. Rear, first of all, here inside of the doors, also with a nice fabric covering. Then this is here in a rather hard pack. 
but with nice manual shade you can pull up, especially for the kids. And then using that EV platform, there's hardly a middle, middle tunnel, just like really slightly. And then this, of course, good. A lot of legroom, although it's not the super longest vehicle, but that's actually a good result. And then also here the headroom, no problem at all. So there's good space here for the whole family in the rear. Middle seat, so what about five tall adults? What also works, you sit a little bit higher there. Of course, it's the focus on the outside seats. You have isofix as well. And this you can pull down with more adaptive cup holders. Yeah, actually, the whole build quality makes a very good impression. What do you think? This one here or the Macan? So I pulled out my Dark Saber. You know what time it is now. Check out the trunk. 530 liters up to 1530 liters. And the normal length here is about a meter or 40 inches. And the width actually as well. Height, especially for our dog owners, 77 centimeters or 30 inches and you can also easily fold the seats from here directly this is here a manual shade like this and underneath if you don't want to use the trunk you can also store some charging cables right here let me just put in some luggage that you have maybe a better understanding of that whole thing you can see it's raising there a little bit towards the seats definitely it's like a bigger suitcase and the normal cabin trolley see here also easily fits in a vertical way. Here you can already see that this one is a vehicle with air suspension. You can put the whole loading area lower than for easier loading in. By the way, this will have towing capacity here in the all-wheel drive version, 2.4 tons. Actually quite notable for an electric vehicle. And pricing, as it is right here in the all-wheel drive spec, but in the entry trim, 75,000 euros. That is around 9,000 euros less expensive than the Porsche Macan all-wheel drive. The price will be lower later on if you have the rear-wheel drive only version than as an entry level. And of course, spec as it is here right now, a lot of the Q6 e-tron models will you know, also be more expensive. So it's not, um, in a, not, a, not an inexpensive car at all, but less expensive than the Porsche Macan with a little bit less tech. Of course, they also need an animal-free interior, said that earlier, but still, because this is now the best EV offering that Audi has, this will be the most sold Audi EV, I'm quite certain of that. What do you think, and would you rather go for a Porsche Macan, or maybe for a Tesla?